I'm Salvatore Babonis, and today's lecture is Ebola, Who's Problem? The Ebola epidemic of 2013 to 2015 caused at least 11,500 deaths, probably many more, uh, mostly in the poor West African countries of Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. Ebola itself is a hemorrhagic fever, uh, meaning that it's a, one of a class of diseases like yellow fever uh, that uh, both cause fever and cause people to uh, hemorrhage body fluids, uh, blood from uh, the cuticles or from the ears or from the around the eyes. Uh, body fluids uh, leak out uh, of the body uh, and contact with those body fluids can spread the disease. It's native to West Central Africa, where it is endemic in local bat populations. Uh, the disease is spread from human to human through contact with bodily fluids, even after the deaths of those uh, infected. So handling dead bodies without uh, proper precautions can result in transmission to survivors. As its distribution makes clear, it is as much a disease of poverty and war as it is a disease of the tropics. All three states that were at the center of the Ebola epidemic lack even the most basic public health infrastructure. The epidemic started in rural Guinea. Uh, Guinea had just emerged from a year, not exactly of civil war, but of a serious civil conflict. Uh, Guinea did not want other countries to know about the disease because Guinea's economy was extremely fragile and if it had let the world know about the presence of Ebola in Guinea uh, of course other countries would have closed their borders which would have been and ultimately was catastrophic for Guinea's economy. Uh, so suspicions about the disease were uh, quashed initially to prevent any uh, panic among Guinea's neighbors. The, Guinea, the disease quickly spread from Guinea into Sierra Leone and Liberia. Uh, the worst epidemics were in Sierra Leone and Liberia, where the infrastructure was even worse than in Guinea, uh, completely destroyed in civil wars that ended in 2002 and 2003. Uh, in Guinea, there were some uh, 4,000 deaths and uh, much larger numbers of deaths in Sierra Leone and Liberia. Historically, Ebola has been most closely associated with the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the most failed of all of Africa's failed states. Like these states of West Africa, the DRC for decades now uh, has lacked even the most basic public health infrastructure. And when I say basic, I mean like this. Uh, this is an Ebola treatment unit of JFK Hospital. You see the Ministry of Health and World, El World Health Organization logos proudly printed on the uh, sign that is hung to mark the, the hospital. And there's a uh, body. It's unclear whether it's uh, a, a living or dead person being uh, dragged into, through the mud into this treatment center. Now, this is public health infrastructure. That is, this is a place in Sierra Leone that actually had a treatment unit of some kind, uh, never mind most villages which had no public health infrastructure whatsoever. Hospital, or you might call it uh, clinic conditions, were so bad in Liberia and Sierra Leone that health care workers actually went on strike in the middle of the epidemic. And it's no wonder they went on strike. Uh, death rates among health care workers were the highest in the country. Uh, the, the surest way to die of Ebola was to be a health care worker trying to help people with Ebola. Workers lacked even the most basic uh, safety and sanitary equipment like gloves and masks. Uh, workers weren't being paid. Uh, the strikes were a response to a simple complete lack of payment. I mean, being asked to put your life on the line in your job uh, may be the call of duty, but being asked to put your life on the line 
as a volunteer, uh, you know, which is effectively what you are if you're not even being paid, is a, a very big ask uh, for people who are you know, already doing a lot to try to help their countries. Uh, in Guinea, uh, there there was a slightly better functioning uh, healthcare system, but in Guinea, government government healthcare workers were actually murdered by villagers uh, who didn't want them coming into their village looking for uh, signs of Ebola, because if a village was found to have Ebola, people might be quarantined, uh, or their uh, bodies, dead bodies, might be forced into immediate burial uh, when people wanted to uh, wait to bury them uh, you know, and conduct proper ceremonies. Um, so you know, asking people to be healthcare workers when they might be uh, well, certainly at risk of contracting Ebola and might even be murdered by people who are you know, angry about uh, the, uh, their treatment uh, in the Ebola epidemic. Um, again, it's a big ask to ask people to do for little or in many cases, no pay. Now, there is a new Ebola vaccine that is uh, being trialed. All signs are that the vaccine uh, seems to work. This vaccine in the future will insulate rich countries from future outbreaks because uh, health workers who go to poor countries can be vaccinated before they go. Most of the people who spread Ebola back to Spain and the United States uh, were health workers who had gone uh, as volunteers to work in West Africa and then brought the disease back with them. Of course, these people will all be vaccinated uh, in before the next uh, breakout of Ebola. And, you know, I don't want to be completely cynical. Um, populations will be vaccinated against Ebola. And there's a very good chance that an Ebola vaccine will uh, prevent or control or you know reduce the impact of future outbreaks of the disease. Uh, Ebola might be quote unquote defeated in the same way that we defeated smallpox and are on the verge of defeating polio. Um, but vaccines don't get at the root of the problem. Um, the root of the problem is a complete lack of local public health systems, a lack of national government capacity, irregular pay for health workers, um, alienated populations who feel uh, completely unrepresented by their own governments. These are the real causes of diseases like uh, Ebola or antibiotic resistant uh, antibiotic resistant uh, tuberculosis or uh, malaria, which uh, are you know, killing many, many more people around the world than Ebola killed in the most recent epidemic. Look, health NGOs are doing great work, but ultimately uh, what the countries of the world need are effective government institutions. Now, We've seen the creation of effective government institutions when it comes to financial institutions. This is a photo of Liberia's uh, central bank. Now, that is not the uh, United States flag. That's the Liberian flag, which is very similar to the U.S. flag flying over the bank. But so most, of the, uh, most of the countries of the world have effective central banks staffed by well-trained Western staff who are paid on a regular basis, uh, who wear suits to work, have functioning computers. Uh, the anthropology that's been done in African countries around bureaucratic systems has shown that the best funded, uh, best trained, uh, actually functioning bureaucratic system in most countries is their central bank. Well, that's perhaps no surprise. Uh, if, you, if you want to find money, where do you go? You go to the bank. Um, but we have had a shown a, a put a place a big priority on ensuring that developing countries have robust central banks and the capacity to undertake financial regulation. We have done nothing, made nothing like the same level of effort uh, to make sure that poor countries have functioning health ministries and public health systems and basic uh, basic health care for their. Uh, for the entire urban and rural populations. I'm Salvatore Babonis. Thank you for listening. You can find out more about me at salvatorebabonis.com or you can also sign up for my monthly podcast or I'm sorry, monthly newsletter on global affairs.